May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Welcome on this homecoming Sunday. Welcome home. We have a lot going on today, including welcoming Logan to our church through his baptism. So I'll keep this short ish. <laughs> I'm our preacher after all. So today we launch into a new program year, which, though clearly, uh, though it clearly will not escape some incursions by COVID, Susan Moyle, who was our interim choir director, went to London for a wedding and came back with COVID. So that's why she's not with us here today. But hopefully this will be our first year in quite some time without the pall of worldwide pandemic looming over us. Yay. So I want to encourage us at this crucial and hopeful moment to take some time to renew our commitment to God and to this home, to Church of the Good Shepherd, and for us to dig into what that means for us, to be the church we are, home, our faith home. I believe God's home, God's kingdom is a community of belovedness. That is a place where all people come in love to be with one another, to be in connection and interconnection. As Paul says it in Romans, owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. So that's it. That's what we do. I'm done with my sermon. No, <laughs> not really. But that is what I hope as we celebrate this homecoming, that we keep foremost in our hearts and our vision for this church home. I know you probably all think I preach about love way too much, but it's love. Enacting the vision of beloved community as church as an expansive faith home, it's actually not easy. And lately, there are so many fault lines and cracks in our society it can kind of be hard to know where to put your next foothold, who to trust, where to put your energy, right? For too many of us, faith communities have been the antithesis of home. They have been places that exclude us, disdain us, fail to love us as we are, or hear our pain without judgment or moral righteousness. I am sure I'm not the only one who has experienced that. You hear things like, you just need to be more pure. That was a big one for young women. To pray more, to love a different gender, to be a different gender, to work harder, be more patient, believe more strongly, believe only as we believe. The list goes on. I took out some of my old journals, you know, when you do that and you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> From when I was a young woman in college and involved in an on-campus faith community that was very exclusive. I talked in that journal about something they preached there, about needing to limit my friend group to those who believed in the same way that I believed lest I be tempted to worldly ways. Oddly, that's when the journal ended. <laughs> Apparently, I was tempted to worldly ways after that. Conflict at that point was a threat to my holy equilibrium. I had, as too often happens, a concept of faith home that was confined to a very small space it was a place that limited rather than expanded who I could be, who we could all be. And it saw the world around me as a threat, not as a possibility. And right here today, after all these years of seminary and study and 
talking to so many of you all, I would argue that instead of faith community, our church home should send us out into the world with an excitement for all the possibilities for love and relationship that we encounter. God as our anchor, Jesus as our guide, and this community as a kind of interconnected team, supporting, bolstering, catching us when we fall, learning with us, facing difficult moments and conflict with us, welcoming us back again and again and again. And that means, and this is the hard part, that means as our gospel passage says today that we can and must resolve to put relationship first. And what does that mean? Not running away from conflict. It means to reconcile rather than avoid conflict. Keeping God, keeping love at the center. We have a whole prescription for it in the Bible, in the gospel today. Read it again. Because if we don't put love at the center, if we don't face down conflict, we risk following, falling into habits of exclusion like I had. Gossip, harsh and blind judgment of others, avoiding those who need our love or protecting ourselves with a veil of moral indignation on other people's behalf without even really knowing what they need or who they are. A place where we covenant to come together as our full, authentic, and vulnerable selves, where we know, we live, knowing we and everyone else are fundamentally loved by God. This, to me, is our faith hope. We are human, you see, and we are in constant need of God's grace and one another's engagement, love, and honesty. It's the only way it works. In God's home, we must strive to hold one another accountable, support one another, stepping up as we are able to keep our home loving, vibrant, and truly welcoming. Because it is very, very easy in the face of conflict and worldly demands to fall into that mindset I had as a young woman, to believe we got to put walls up to maintain our faith or hold back because if we commit too much, we might be hurt. Instead, I invite you to welcome one another to this home with generosity, to be brave as we encounter conflict and our growing edges, to gather in Christ's name with open hearts and our minds ready to learn and connect. And there are so many ways to do that, to take adult formation, to be involved in a small group, to get involved with Alter Guild. Shortly, a in later this month, a survey will be coming out from Renewal Works that will ask you to really look at where we are as a spiritual community. Fill it out. Let's be brave and really take a look at who we are. God contains so much. We needn't be afraid. Christ gives so much, encourages us to love with a risk, to risk love. And the Holy Spirit lifts us up again and again. God's home is more infinite than we can imagine. If we follow Christ, love God, and let the Holy Spirit in, there is no need for walls because Jesus in his death and his resurrection has opened for us the whole expanse of God's kingdom to be our home. CGS, our faith home, is just one small spot in that great expanse, one room. And I'm telling every one of you right now, Church of the Good Shepherd is your home because it's God's home and you are God's beloved child. It doesn't matter if you've been here for 45 minutes or 45 years or 68 years, which somebody told me it was how long they had been here. It doesn't matter what your background is, where you live, however you live, or whoever you love. It doesn't matter if you come back every Sunday or you never come back. It doesn't matter if you haven't been here in years. This is God's home, and therefore, this is your home. And you will always be welcome. So together, this year, let's commit 
this program year, our worship, everything we do here, this home, CGS, to love, to vibrancy, to reconciliation, and to renewal in Christ's holy and infinite loving name. Amen.